All right, we're live. So, hello, everybody. Welcome to the TST um, meeting. Today, we're going to talk about two topics. One of them is a presentation from Roberto about a memory management system for STM platforms. And then the other brief topic, topic is a discussion about how to publish uh, Docker images during the build uh, process. So, but before we leap into that, I'm going to turn it over to David uh, for a little bit of a, a shout out. Hey everyone, you can hear me okay? Yes. And Thomas, by the way, you're a little quiet uh, uh, remotely. I don't know if the mic's nearby or not. But... Okay, okay, we'll keep that in mind. Thanks. Okay, we're glad to hear I'm coming through. So, um, just I wanted to give a shout out. There's a number of uh, new brigades that are getting up and running, so this is not meant to single uh, anybody out, but I was uh, wanting to definitely uh, give a shout out to the teaching brigade. So uh, that's being led by Abdulhim, and there's a number of community members who are getting involved in that. So I wanted to give a shout out to all of them. Uh, they're up and running, building um, open and modular teaching material to help people learn both SDN concepts and ONOS fundamentals. And I think they also want to do um, Cord fundamentals as well going forward, giving people hands on uh, understanding about how both ONOS and Cord work. Um, and if you're interested in what they're doing, either by getting involved or just uh, being able to make use of what they're doing, they have a number of communication channels I wanted to let people know about. I don't know if, if, if you're sharing, if you're looking at the acknowledgement screen or, or uh, um, want to find it, uh, uh, there's links to everything there that I'm going to mention. So they have a uh, regular meeting every other Thursday at 9 Pacific. The next one is tomorrow, and there's a Hangouts link. You can join for that. They also have a mailing list and a Slack channel. So if you're interested or curious about what they're doing, take a look in the Acknowledgements page, and there's links to all of that uh, as well. And again, there's other brigades that are getting up and running, too. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll give them shout-outs later as well, but uh, definitely wanted to uh, recognize what's going on with uh, the teaching brigade. So thanks to everybody. Great. Thank you, David. Okay, uh, I'm going to, um, Roberto, I'm going to pass you the presentation, right? Okay, thank you. Perfect. Can see your screen? Okay, um, okay, perfect. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Roberto. Uh, I'm here with uh, Antonio, and basically, uh, both of us uh, plus Domenico, which who is not in the call uh, right now. Uh, we have uh, investigated on this kind of uh, memory management system for uh, SDN controller in the in the last year, basically, uh, from both theoretically and also practically point of views. And uh, so finally we ended up uh, w w with, uh, uh, with uh, implementing it for, uh, for ONOS as a proof of concept. And um, so we are going to, to introduce you th this, uh, this, uh, this concept and also what we did uh, from the implementation point of view to you and uh, understand if it, is, if it can be interesting for, for the ONOS community in general uh, and see if it is could be uh, could be uh, an interesting uh, tool or application or, or component for for the onos uh, platform let me start with the uh, with the problem that we are we are we have tried to to, to solve. and uh, yeah the, the the problem is the the limited size of uh, tcams in uh, in the switches Basically, TCAMs in the in the switches nowadays can host uh, no more than 20k floor rules, and uh, and uh, this could, could be uh, a problem for uh, for many uh, SDN deployments, uh, uh, as uh, in many many deployments like uh, such as data centers, uh, the floor rules uh, the floor rules can can be much more, uh, basically up to 100,000 uh, or more, up to one or two millions of floor rules. Unfortunately, TCAMs are uh, power hungry and also uh, very expensive. So usually, these switches mount 
uh, tea cans of uh, very limited size. And uh, the, the problem with this limited size of tea cans is that uh, the, the network cannot perform efficiently uh, because of many uh, dro many droplet flows, many many uh, uh, high latencies, uh, also reduced throughput. And uh, what uh, the basic idea behind uh, behind our work is to to uh, uh, port the this, the mechanism that we have in computer operating system uh, to uh, the the network operating systems uh, such as Onos, OpenData, or other other CTN platforms. The, in computer operating system, we have a main memory, which is the RAM memory, which is fast, but also in the typically, typically is not uh, is not so big. So in many in many situations, especially with a, a high number of virtual machines or uh, many processes. This this memory is not sufficient to host all the all the data. In this case, the computer operating system uh, leverages on another another uh, kind of memory, which is called usually swap memory, which is hosted by the by the hard disk, which is kind of a slow memory, but can can be used to to store part of the of the data, which is. We, 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 which must be maintained in the in the memory. Uh, uh, the idea, uh, in case of uh, SDN environments and the network operating system, is to have, uh, of course, the TCAM and the RAM of the devices, which is which re represent the fast memory, and uh, the RAM of the computer, which hosts the, the the SDN controller, the network operating system, as the slow memory, kind of um, extension extension of the of the device's memory, which is slower, of course, but is it, it is much bigger. How we do that? Uh, the idea is to leverage on some of the properties of the of the of the open flow protocol. Uh, uh, in this case, we are using the table full error message, but it is not limited only to to that. We can use a, other kind of uh, triggers for uh, for starting our our process process. Uh, so when the TCAM gets full. The, the the switch sends a table full error message to the SDN controller. In this case, we start what we call the swap out uh, process, and we move part of the rules that are stored inside the TCAM. We move them into a database maintained by the uh, SDN controller. In this case, we may we make some free space for the for the new entries that that can be installed in, inside the TCAM to handle the, the incoming traffic. What uh, what are uh, the, the rules that we are moving to the slower memory? Uh, the rules are the, the least used uh, rules. Uh, we determine how uh, which are the least used uh, rules by uh, analyzing the statistics that we collect, of course. But, well, that are already collected by ONOS in the current implementation. Uh, we also have the opposite uh, process, which is the swap-in, uh, which uh, is, is triggered by a packet-in that arrives to the SDN controller and uh, this uh, the, the header in the packeting matches one of the uh, the rules that were uh, previously swapped out. So we do this uh, transparently to the to the uh, network applications. So we swap out the swap in without uh, uh, the application are aware of that, of course. 
and uh, yeah, uh, please uh, uh, just interrupt me if uh, something is not clear at at any time. Don't don't worry. Um, yeah, what we implemented is it uh, in Onos. We did it as an Onos uh, Onos application, so we did not modify any of the core modules and component of Onos. So we we just use the, the ONOS API, uh, Java ONOS APIs. In this case, you can see we use the flow rule service to install or remove, remove flow rules, also to collect statistic counters, and also to understand what applications are doing. We uh, use the open flow controller uh, API to intercept uh, table full errors and to trigger the swap out uh, mechanism. The storage service, because we maintain some databases, especially the swap, uh, what we call swap database, which contains all the uh, swap out um, rules. And finally, the packet uh, service, of course, that we use in the swapping process uh, uh, to intercept all the packet messages before they arrive to, to the to the to the other applications because the M, we register the MMS the memory management system with priority zero which means that we receive the packet in be, before all the others all the other application in this slide you see more or less the architecture of the memory management system is, uh, as implemented for Onos. And uh, yeah, the swap out. Uh, here is the mod swap out, which uh, fills the swap out swap database uh, when uh, when we when a table full triggers the swap out uh, the swap out uh, process. And uh, one uh, one thing that I want to mention here is this module, which is a real dependency. Uh, because we uh, we also implement a kind of uh, rule dependency computation, which means that we do not swap out uh, the rules from the TCAM uh, arbitrarily. Uh, I would say, but we uh, remove all uh, one, once we decide to remove uh, to to move to remove from the TCAM a rule, we also remove all the the, the other rules that are uh, dependent with this rule. That means that we ensure that if we remove the uh, a rule uh, uh, with, uh, I would say, high priority, we also check if there are other rules that can match the same packets uh, with lower priority in order to avoid inconsistencies. Uh, in, in the network. Of course, in the swapping uh, process, when we restore a rule that was previously uh, swapped out, we also restore all the dependency, well, what we call dependency chain, in order to uh, rebuild uh, what the structure that, wa that was already, that wa was pre previously uh, present in the, in the TCAM. And uh, yeah, uh, we also evaluated, we published a couple of papers uh, on this. We also uh, did some kind of evaluation with, unfortunately, we were not able to, to but we are, you, uh, the, the, the evaluation process is still ongoing. But we, we, we used very, would say, light traffic traces at, at the moment because the, how the, the open flow switch that we have here in uh, in our lab, uh, which is uh, an NEC, uh, was very problematic with uh, heavy uh, the traffic traces like uh, the Kaida uh, traces. So at the moment, we, then we ended up with uh, testing it with uh, open open B switch and Mininet. But uh, uh, in these days, we are uh, testing uh, the memory management system with. Another uh, another switch that we have here, which is a Pika 8, which is not very powerful, but uh, it's much better than the than the, the other one, the NEC. 
So uh, as you can see here in the in the results of the evaluation, uh, yeah, the the effectiveness of the memory management system, of course, depends on the tra the, the traffic, the amount of traffic that comes uh, derives to to the network, and also on the uh, size of the of the of, of the TCAM. Uh, in this case, uh, with different size of TCAMs, we have different also results. When the TCAMs uh, is the, is bigger, I would say, um, the the effectiveness of the memory management system is lower because, uh, of course, the 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 switch can handle uh, easier easier easily. Almost all the the packets, uh, um, because there is more more space in the TCAM and there is less uh, uh, lower need uh, to to swap out um, to swap out the 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 the, 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 the rules and uh, yeah and in this case sorry I forgot to mention that uh, this is this evaluation compares compares the, the throughput, end-to-end -end throughput between two hosts connect, connected by a SDN switch with and without the MMS. So you can see more or less the difference here with this uh, very light uh, traffic trace. And uh, this is a very fast introduction of the memory management system. Uh, and so uh, we are here uh, open to to hear your uh, questions. I have a, a have question a about, question about uh, the swap out rule. What's the eviction policy? Uh, like, how do you decide which rules to evict when the tables are full? The policy at the moment uh, um, is that uh, it we remove we we swap out. Uh, a, per, a specific, a configurable percentage of the of the rules uh, inside uh, installed inside the, the TCAM, and uh, we move the least used um, rules, the least matched rules inside the TCAM, based on the statistic collected by by owners, but we do not remove. Only by using the statistic, we also uh, use um, implemented an algorithm that uh, try to elaborate a little bit these statistics in order to understand if not only if uh, uh, not only to count how many packets match it, the, that rule, but when that that um, that packets match it, that rule in order. To avoid that uh, big uh, micro flow uh, arrived in the past and ma that matched a rule in the past, uh, uh, basically this rule, uh, sorry, uh, if a rule uh, was matched by a, a elephant flow in the past. Uh, to avoid that, that, that this kind of rule is never uh, uh, swapped out, even though this rule is is no more matched, just because it was matched uh, far far in the past by an elephant flow. So we are kind of trying to understand when, also when the the rule is matched. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, in, general, general, in general, this is a pretty good idea. Pretty good idea. But, but I guess, I guess in Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I think the the algorithm that you decide to use for uh, eviction is probably like the the most critical thing because you could have random flows, low bandwidth flows, flows where you have packets that are sent very infrequently. For example, um, tra trace flows or probing flows, um, which are measuring latency or uh, you know other things. Um, that would need to be high priority that you'd want to have always matching um, because you're making uh, forwarding decisions or traffic routing decisions based on the results of those, those traces. 
um, or just ultra low latency sensitive uh, flows at the application layer, uh, which may not be high bandwidth. So, um, yeah, I think this is this is interesting, and and would be interested in in seeing sort of this move into the the core. And um, I think the the interesting piece is is the part that um, we didn't really get too much details on the slide, and you just uh, started to explain a little bit, but um, maybe that's the, your paper or something that you're working on. Do you, a quick question also, do you measure sort of um, how recent the flows have been active by so performing some delta analysis on a, on a flow statistics within a, you know, within a recent time window? Because it could be that you have a ginormous, you know, uh, you have a, a elephant flow that has been active five days ago, but it hasn't said anything since then. Do you do you at all evaluate sort of the recent activity? Mm. It is. It is I'm Tony speaking. Uh, it is like a mixture between the two, because uh, uh, we maintain an history of all the flow. So when the flow comes for the first time, then the MMS maintains inside its database an external statistic. So an history based on, on, on the delta on which owners collect the statistics. So the default timeout for collecting statistics should be five or 10 seconds. Now I don't remember the right number. Then uh, we save uh, the delta of packets between uh, this, uh, uh, this value and uh, for every flow that is uh, currently inside the TCAM. And then we evaluate uh, if this flow through another algorithm, uh, if it is really matched or not. Because since we evaluate all the history of the flow, we need to understand if in the last part of the time that we are collecting the statistics, uh, as uh, Roberto said before, when we have an elephant flow, this elephant flow has got a really high uh, values of packets that uh, pass through this uh, flow. Um, sorry? Oh, I see, I see, okay, I understand. I just wanted to make sure the time was considered, not just the yeah, raw count. All the, all the time, so then there is this algorithm that checks uh, if uh, this flow is uh, currently matched or not. Yeah, however, yeah, th this is one way to, to do that. So basically we are, we, we are also working on this mechanism. Uh, uh, because uh, now basically we are evaluating the the past what happened in the past of for this uh, for a specific rule what we are also investigating if we can predict something about the future of this rule b based on some um, uh, machine learning algorithms in order to understand if we can predict when uh, a, a rule is matched in the future so may because it could be possible that the, the past is not sufficient to, to evict uh, uh, efficiently, so I would say, the, the, the best set of rules. Because maybe a rule is not matched by a lot of time, but maybe it's going to be matched in a very short time. So it would be nice, especially from a scientific point of view, to understand if the the, some uh, some uh, some rules are going to be uh, to be matched uh, soon. So we, even though they have bad statistic, we are going to leave them them uh, in, inside the TCAM and maybe remove other other uh, other rules. This is another direction that we are investigating. Also, another policy it was the one that uh, you were pointing out. Uh, this um, if you have some flows that should be always stay there. Probably we can also investigate a policy based on uh, the application that sent down the flow. So I can say to the system, please don't delay this flow because it's associated to an application that requires uh, a low latency. So you can work with this stuff inside ONOS because you associate the flow rules to the, um, to the application. Have you looked at um, uh, OpenFlow 1.5 and the eviction policies in, in 1.5? Mm, 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you say eviction and uh, vacancy events. Yeah, yeah. This is something that, but this is um, this is something that is uh, is foreseen by OpenFlow, of course. But uh, this is, uh, as far as I understand, is not transparent to the application. Uh, is something that the application should um, uh, in some way configure, right? Or the, the yeah, I mean, I mean, the controller can take care of it, but yeah, the application. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, uh, yeah, but but this is not, uh, I would say, something um, automatic and uh, optimized. I would I would say based on the on the on the on on more complex policies. It could be a type of policy that can be used by the, the memory management when you use OpenFlow 1.5 and so on. If For instance, vac vacancy, vacancy events could be one of the another trigger that can be can trigger the swap out means. So when the 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 the, the, the number of, of rules um, becomes uh, uh, goes above a certain uh, threshold, uh, the, the 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 switch sends uh, uh, a specific message. I don't remember which kind of message to the controller, and then we can trigger the the swap out uh, uh, process be before the the, uh, the table becomes becomes full. Yeah, I I, I see the this mechanism as a uh, a tool for the for the for the memory management system. So uh, something that can be uh, used by the memory management system to to uh, improve uh, the mechanism it's itself. Yeah. Will you be um, where, where are you in the process of contributing this? Where we are in the in the process, uh, we have, uh, um, as I said before, we have uh, this kind of prototype which is stable because we tested it with different traces, and uh, it, it is implemented as an external application that ju just uses uh, the the Java APIs of uh, of uh, Onos. And it is implemented for ONOS 1.5.1, but I'm pretty sure it is not uh, very painful to port it to the to the latest version of ONOS. We are just using standard APIs, no, no, nothing very uh, version specific. Okay. Um, so I um, the reason I'm the reason I'm asking is we're um, sort of starting a process of figuring out how to disaggregate the ONOS code base, and so this might be an example of one of the applications that could be hosted in its own repo separately. Mm -hmm. Embedded yet? What do you think, Ali? Mm -hmm. Is there something this could be used as an example of a sort of a application that's linked in but in a separate repo? Part of all robots, right? Because we're heading in that direction, right? Anyway, thank you guys. It's just, uh, interesting. So thank you, no, thank you. If there's no other questions, uh, then uh, we can probably switch to the other topic. Thanks a lot for uh, for listening and uh, for, uh, yeah, for, uh, for hosting, hosting the presentation. Bye bye. Bye. Can be presenting. Uh, no, no. You can present. Oh, uh, yeah. I can present. Uh, I don't mind. You can present. Um, okay. Is there a doc? Not really. Just I just want to go to the doc I have. The other doc I have. I just send you a link in Slack. All right. Yeah. Good enough. Um, yep, I'm not finding anything.
so it's okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, so currently in Docker Hub, um, we have um, ostensibly a tag, a Docker tag for every version of Honor. Um, but the problem is that these tags are automated builds that are following the maintenance branches, right? So the 1.8 tag refers to the latest commit on the maintenance branch, on the Honor dash 1.8 maintenance branch. Of us. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so there's currently no way to refer to 1.8.0 or 1.8.1, those specific commits or those specific builds. Um, so I guess what we want to do is um, there may be some value in having these automated builds, but probably not a lot of value. So um, ideally, we want to push um, specific images to Docker Hub for the actual release versions of Honor, like 1.8.0, 1.8.1, and so on. Um, and um, I guess this can be done manually, but it's, but it's going to be better if it's done as part of the release process, right? Sure. So yeah. um, once, we, once we make a release, we can simply just build the Docker image and then push it to, to Docker Hub. Um, and building the Docker image is pretty easy as one command. And then the REST APIs allow you to push to, to Docker Hub. So it shouldn't be a huge um, sort of addition to the build script. But, um, this will give us a lot of value because in code we're currently referencing a a honor Docker image which exists in the open code repo, but ideally we'd have it on the honor repo so that everybody can use it. So do you think there is value in retroactively going back to some of the, the existing? I mean, we can do that if we want to. Yeah. Um, we should probably work our way backwards then. Retroactively do what? So these these are all following the heads of the maintenance branches, right? So do we want to just for consistency's sake? I mean. Once these are these are pruned out by the system. What the the, the one dot two, one dot three are pruned out. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to go back in history and and no, I'm, I'm just yeah, we don't know what, you, what you guys would want. So because we have because if you're gonna do it, we should follow consistent scheme, right? Yeah, so if right. you do it, uh, let's say that we need it for one eight. Yeah. So that's what code normally does, right? So, so we should do. Uh, so should we do um, a major like when we cut out the maintenance releases? Uh, let's say. One eight one one yeah. two. Those should have each of their own image, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So why don't we just do those? Why don't we just cut them in full? So like have one eight zero, one eight one, one eight two. Yeah. Uh, we can probably retroactively build at least the uh, latest one eight yeah. zero, right? Yeah. yeah. And That's then it. we can probably prune the other one. There's there there is a in the autumn. Well, so Docker doesn't automatically build tags. No, you can give it a tag. You can tell it to build this. This particular tag. So uh, the problem is that it's a manual process. Right? No API to uh, there might be an API. I'll have to look. I don't know. There probably is. Um, yeah. But then you have to write something that like actuates that API. So I don't know which one you pre which one we prefer. Is it, is it like I, I think like making it part of the release process might might be a bit more make more sense. Like we could have released one one eight one. Yeah, it's just that's why I thought suggestion, right? Yeah, because yeah, so you have to make it you have to go through this thing and yeah. you can probably do do it in an automated way through Docker Hub. Uh, uh, with the advantage of maybe building it ourselves, building the container ourselves and pushing it up, is that we could probably make a smaller container image. Uh, right now it's half a gig. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 well I guess you know we're we're about about hundred thirty yeah, I mean, um, plus Java 8 is Oracle, JRE seems to be. JRE. That brings in a whole bunch of levels. So if you do the JDK, it's huge. Yeah. The JRE itself, which well, the problem is there. The moment you install Oracle, there's no way of on Ubuntu the Oracle JVM or the Oracle package for Java to be headless. So when you install it, it sucks down X. Oh. <laughs> so if we could run on um, open JRE, then we could use the headless version. Yeah, which is wrong. But, but the point is that like you could you could even build a container where you just copy in the binary that you need or whatever, mm -hmm. and without 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 caring about the rest. Um, so so but, but this can evolve, right? So I mean, for for the time being, right now we could just publish do use with whatever simplest scheme. Yeah. We could hopefully, like you said, just one command we can insert somewhere along the process. Uh, to yeah, insert uh, a way to build it. Yeah. The, the one command that's building it ourselves or that's having Docker Hub build it? Um, so I don't know if there's an API to get Docker Hub to add a new kind of build. Um, okay. No, we can do that. I mean, a new kind of build. Yeah, like, like to do the screen. 
to do that. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah it probably is. I mean, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I mean if, the, if that exists, then that's really easy because we just make a call and, and it would go and build it automatically. Um, otherwise, we just have to build a, you know, as you're doing the, once you've done the build, you can build a Docker image, which is Docker build, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then there's some REST APIs you can use to push the image up to oh, the Docker Hub and tag it. Okay. Um, so I guess you have to work out the authentication and stuff because there's a few calls you have to make. But um, well, you can you can if you use pipeline you can just use. Uh, no, I wonder if that would be. If, if you just use the oh, fuck it. Uh, <laughs> fine. If you just use, uh, <laughs> if, if you I mean you can just push Docker 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 the Docker daemon has a well the Docker uh, service has a push. Uh, yeah. Your your registry it can be pointed to yeah, Docker Hub. Yeah. Push it in. <coughs> Python. A module word. Okay. Publish. Publish it. And as, as far as naming goes, we're okay with like 1.8.0, 1.8.1. Yeah, I think so. And going going forward, we'll get rid of the 8. Yeah, which refers to the branch. Yeah. Yeah. So is there something that, how, how should we go about doing this? I mean, I wonder if this would be a good opportunity to bring in uh, Vishwa. Well, so the, I guess the, the, the decision, I guess, uh, so, the, so we've decided that we will publish Docker, uh, publish images as part of our own release process. Yeah. I, I, would, I would suggest we do that to start yeah. with, yeah. So that would mean, for example, when we do, when we can, like, say, so are you thinking when we do quote unquote official builds, which are RCs, betas, I mean, it's all like a. I'm like a little system. worried about pushing up half a gig that that's going to make the build take forever. I don't know how long does it take to push one of these things? I mean, again, so so the point is, uh, like, like if we build it ourselves. Yeah. Um. So the problem here, and the reason why it takes half a gig, is because I have to suck down the code and build the code and and fix the tarball. Build and, environment and, as well. Yeah. So. Uh, or you could just put the runtime JRE if you built the code off the side and. Yeah. Gotcha. You can you can just basically package. like like as the part of the build process generate the tarball, you can mm -hmm. take that tarball, shove it into a, shove it into a container and untar it right essentially, and then it's a lot gotcha. smaller than it's a lot smaller than, than doing all those other steps to go around, and it will be also much more predictable. I like that much better because we could also then use eventually use that image for ten seconds. So yeah, no. locally through the stuff. Whatever you want. Huh? I mean, yeah, okay. I haven't, I haven't looked at how much we can shrink the image. At. What's, what's the standard just to put it? Maybe we should have it for one, for a cord release. Well, for the cord release, we can do it by hand, right? That's that. We can do that as well. Um, this edition relies on 183. So, I mean, so I guess the, the, the reason I ask is because. Uh, whether we ought to have Ray go through that, or Ray and Vishwa go through that, or just Vishwa, or I, I don't know. Just, I mean, it would be, would be, shouldn't be too hard, it seems like, right? Yeah, I think, yeah. Would it be yeah. something you would be able to work with Ray on that, or? Yeah. I think something like that. I don't know yeah, what it is. It it fits in, I mean, uh, so it fits into the larger story of like the, 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 the yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, exactly. Because uh, as part of like publishing a Docker image, you publish Debian, RPMs, whatever, right? All this are like, like uh, well, absolutely. Uh, all, all yeah. this like, uh, uh, it absolutely falls into that process, which is why I asked if uh, we should put it in full in for this one. Yeah, it's not right. I'm just wondering how much, um, more time uh, uh, we should dedicate. Uh, how much more, how much time are we willing to dedicate as opposed to just building a bucket file and pushing it up? Adding another job on on uh, on Jenkins to it. Well, but, yeah, I mean, well, either way, you got to write the scripts, right? So. Well, there's not. I mean, there's not many scripts to write. Um, right. Well, I mean, so that's that's, that's the basic thing you need, right? Just build it and push it up. Yeah. And then in the future, you can think about reducing the size and all that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See what you mean. Okay. So the, really, this could be like a build release uh, process post amp because this is yeah. not something that has to be done. As part of that same sort of a lock repo, blah blah blah, revisioning and everything else, you can do you can execute this on in retroactive retroactively on the on our star GP. Yeah, right. That's right. what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. So in that is we would build code, but yeah, we could build it. We could make a Docker file and build it for five GB. Yep. That's one 
we have to go with that because that'll make it more flexible. And and if you do have that, then you can potentially detach it, yeah. and that's sort of a uh, more of a nice process that doesn't need to be done in line with everything else. Yeah. So that we don't. That is out the very easy to split into the current that. So uh, you could do that after locking and right. you can do it as a physical standard. It is a separate operation. So uh, why don't we just at least learn, so we need to figure out how to do that at least just manually one out. Yep. Produce, we automate it as a tool so that we understand how it's done for now. We can run it sort of manually and retrospect it on 182 okay. and then in future on 183, right? Yes. Yeah. And then you can also do it for 190 when you yeah. do for the Okay, so when we do that, then maybe we ought to then, but we ought to probably at least bring in visual that this is what we're doing so that he's aware, right? Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Or I mean, I, I guess the, the, the devil is the details of how you're planning on doing it. Because, I mean, you could just write a shelf list. That's and what I'm thinking. That's the, the whole building is right now. Just right. Right. Yeah, I mean, we just that would work fine. Yeah. And that would also, you could lay that in Jacob's group. Yeah, yeah but maybe we should like, take, take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, to move away from shelters. What? Apply? I mean, no? We don't have time for that now. Really? No. Like, it's, really? Like, it's, it's just. I mean, I, I, to me, pipe, um, pipeline is just some yeah. appendage to Jenkins. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't it's just show. Which I think uh, having, I don't know, I, I, I think uh, it's fine. I, I don't have any specific reason about it. No, it just, it just uses a different implementation language for the scripting. So we'd have to redo all the build scripts. So again, like, like, well, yeah, but we're going to do that anyway. That's the, the idea, is to move to a more um, kind of, like, if you want to, if you want to uh, increase the frequency of releases of ONOS and increase the frequency of uh, flexibility of your build process, um, going, moving forward and, and doubling down on, on chess scripts is not going to allow you to do that. You're just going to get into this kind of messy situation where if you just use the right tools that are there and that make your life easier, that do all the work for you rather than writing it yourself. I mean, sure. I mean, hey, if you guys want to want to do shell, do shell. You might get. But uh, but uh, but I'm just suggesting that, that this is an opportunity to do something new, right? Uh, and 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 uh, it, it requires installing one plugin. On the ONOS project Jenkins, and if it only constrains itself to doing the Docker build for now, at least it's an experiment that you can learn from. If you don't want to, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't have to I don't, I don't, I don't need to. I mean, oh, I, let's talk about that to Vishwara. Yeah. We have a brigade for that. I know, but he, like he's still uh, he's learning. I don't, I don't know what he's up to, but I can ask. Sorry, but if he start to learn something, new that well, I, I only give him. I mean, it's a function of if it's time, <laughs> if it's time sensitive. I, I and honestly, then, I and if it takes just a couple of commands to do, then I think shell script is perfectly appropriate. I do it. It, to yeah. me, it's a very lightweight. I don't think it takes us any further down the down the shell scripts. And I personally don't see anything wrong with shell scripts by themselves. It all depends on how they're put together. And if they're too monolithic, yeah, then that's too bad. If they're fairly granular, it's 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 discrete really results along the line, and there's no, no nothing wrong with them. There's no difference between a script and a program. That's not entirely right. true, but but okay. Um, uh, like uh, so. So so the thing is, pipeline executes only in the context of Jenkins, correct? No, it's a, it's a Ruby program, so you can execute it wherever you want. It's a Ruby program. Okay, it relies on other plugins and 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 relies on other plugins. Okay. That you need then, to. Then I would question it flexibly. I would I would use it as a tool, but we need to be careful I mean, so we I don't fall into it, right? I mean that's fine. That's fine. You can question its flexibility if you want to. Uh, that's, that's so I'm right. not questioning flexibility of the pipeline. I'm just, anyway, it, it, it's fine. I don't have any objection to it. I'm just saying if it's if you're talking about a couple of commands and if you need it quickly, then we should just do the short script. If you want to use it, I if you don't have a little time, then we can use it as an opportunity. What you suggest is which is to take the pipeline, right? That's, that's your choice. Um, well, I mean, you, uh, you're helping to invent. It's not, I mean, it's not really my choice. I'm just bringing up options and and, and so what I, is important to us. Right? No, I'm no, not I, at all objecting to using pipeline. Okay. Um, uh, whatever you guys prefer to 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 to, to use. So, for example, you're saying there's a plugin that already would upload. Let's say images to Docker. Yeah. Okay. It, 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 yeah. So I, I think there's a plugin. I mean, there's a 
struggle for forever. I mean, struggle. instead of writing on our own and maintaining our own code yeah, yeah, for something that already exists, if it's I mean, something we can just use. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it, I think it I think it brings in a lot of uh, uh, a lot of value, and uh, and and you can like it's a, it's an entry point to 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 an environment where you have. Uh, I know like the, you don't like the sound of these things, but like like to to like you know continuous deployment, continuous integration, it uh, it opens the door to that. I'm just suggesting as part of this, uh, uh, to create a new project that could be the first uh, um, uh, the, the first foray into 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 that world. Um, that's all I'm suggesting. Now now I would even argue that like like writing a shell script or writing a Jenkins uh, a Jenkins file, you're gonna spend the same amount of time. Right, like it's going to be the, the the amount of time required for either is going to be equal. Uh, so uh, that's all I'm saying. Now, now, okay. now, now, pick pick your poison, right? If you want to do it with shell do it with shell script. But right? I I think uh, ultimately there has to be a, like a you have to recognize that like uh, using shell scripts for everything doesn't uh, it it'll ultimately cause more problems. Right, unless you want to architect the shell script as well and create, uh, you know, modules and this and that, and you can reuse pieces of it. I mean, yeah, sure, you can do that, but uh, man, that's, uh, holy shit! Uh, I'd rather have have a have a real programming language. I don't. I just to me it sounds like a to me it's like a it's like it's like a hundred percent natural. But okay, well, but, but, but I mean, okay. timing span time, we don't need anybody else, right? We're not greedy. We're not even greedy. Integration. Because right now it's using one that you don't do out of the I mean, so, 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 I mean, so you said Vishwa is not quite ready yet. I don't know what he, I mean, he, I don't know what he's up to. So, in, unfortunately, he's not online. Uh, it would be, it would be handy. But, I mean, we could, pro we should probably bring him in. And then maybe if he can help, uh, if you John can help Ray to figure out, you know, maybe use it, the, the Docker. Um, with at least with the pipeliner and then John with the Docker stuff, and so that way at least Ray is. Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to force anybody into something they don't want to I, do. I, I mean, I thought the point was to long term to go with pipeline anyway, right? Yeah, but I thought good. the the pipeline was primarily its primary purpose was really just to well to pipeline various steps. What those steps are, how you code those should be as concise as possible. Like you're just basically just giving the steps that it runs in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. In Jenkins, you can code shell scripts, right? Even without pipeline, or you can you can code shell scripts, you can code Groovy, you can do whatever yeah. you want to do. And it was at least my belief, but that could perhaps I'm mistaken, that putting too much stuff in Jenkins ties you to Jenkins. But again, so what you should what you should be putting to Jenkins would be just basically the little the little nuggets of things that he those so, specific things. So, right? There should be not much code in Jenkins. There's no code. There's zero code in Jenkins. Right? Or in pipeline or any plugin that you look at it, right? Well, plugins are plugins. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean uh, like it, why are we using why why do we use all kinds of plugins for for, you know, for bugs? I'm talking you know, about config. But, 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 but my point is there is zero code in, in Jenkins when you when you run the the, the, the Jenkins file. And the Jenkins file is included in your code base. Okay, so it's it's revision control of just like mm -hmm. your code. Mm -hmm. right? So it's part of your code. Uh, and, and, and and you just tell pipeline there's the Jenkins file, do this. Right. And Okay, so the uh, I was just well, simply what I was after was a very, very simple thing. Okay, so that if let's say tomorrow we decide to go with Travis or something else, some electric build or whatever you, you mm -hmm. know, super duper build, then we don't have to rewrite our bulk of our script or a bulk of our tools to suddenly change from this build tool to that build tool. That's all I was after, which is one reason why I thought what regardless what it is, if you give small discrete steps that people can run either manually or they can run in the context of some sort of a build system, whether it's pipeline or Jenkins, Travis, whatnot. Clearly, I mean if, if you do have some recipes that are built system specific or CI system specific or Jenkins system, of course I completely agree they ought to be checked in. But I'm trying to minimize that even if they're checking, I'm minim minimizing the volume of them. And if pipeline allows us to do that, I'm perfectly for that. It's no problem. I'm just trying to avoid having 
two strong ties with the city bill system because when the new one comes around, you know, there's a lot of that to support. That's all. That's all. That's sure. I, I, yeah. Um, um, I really I, I, so if you can help Ray, if you could sure. help Ray maybe with uh, getting going on our drinking system, you can maybe document it so that this was aware of it at least. Is that right? And then John can help you with, uh, with the specifics of the doctor stuff. Is that right? Yep. And we can use it as, like you suggested, we can use it as an experiment to, to bootstrap this, if, especially if the goal is eventually to go there. So we don't need to do, by the way, to do the entire pipeline, right? We Can we just start with just this Docker thing just to give it a try and... The only reason, well, it just then adds one more step in the book. Because right now, the release build is a single script which invoked that does everything. And now at the end, what you have to do is poke this pipeline yes. to go. It's not the end of the world. So we can use the option also of not publishing everything, which I kind of like. I don't know if we want to publish every RC and every beta. We only need to publish what you might need, basically, once you look at the main releases, right? You don't need the RCs and whatnot. I don't know. So we can use this thing just for Docker for now, just to start, and then we expand it uh, eventually if yeah. we like it to something else, right? It can be a learning experience for Vishwa and others. And if we all say we like it, we just use it for uh, other stuff. So we don't see this thing of saying, uh, okay, we need to destroy completely what we have and go to the pipeline and do a bunch of work now. I think it could be also an excuse to do that work. But no, I mean, if we if we don't have time, you, you know, it seems to be something in the middle between what you are both saying, right? Yes. I, just, I don't know, maybe I'll, I like to do two, two minutes. You do, but that's okay. No. <laughs> I think. I just don't have to work my whole condition. Yes, but you're willing to redo work you've already done so that you don't have to do work. That's what I don't get. I look at this and I go, oh my God, we have months of work in these scripts and now we have to like redo them all. That just makes the hair stand on the back of my neck. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, I think if you discover a new, a new, a new tool that makes things easier for you, um, and you've already invested somewhere down the path of, like, I'm not saying like, okay, oh, we've discovered this new programming language, and it's so much cooler than Java, therefore we should rewrite one off in Java. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we have this, we have, we, we have, we're, we're, we're um, investing in a process that requires us to develop uh, tools that, that already exist. And we have to maintain these these tools that we develop, right? and this distracts us from our uh, main goal, which is developing an SDN platform. I don't care about developing a build system; it's not important to me. I want to find the right tools that minimize my work in that as in that area because I want to focus on this SDN platform that I want to build. And the more ancillary tools I have in this SDN platform that I have to maintain and build myself the less time I have to build the SDN platform. That's, that's, the, that's the crux of the argument. Yeah. This is why I like new tools, because it's like, like I could walk from San Francisco to here, but I got this thing called a car that's a, like a new invention. Well, not really, but it was at one point, right? and people got in cars and drove down. Right? And like, it's the same thing. People probably said at the time, hey, you know what, these cars, you know, I, I have feet. I could have done this. But it's faster. It's the same thing with elevators and self-driving cars. and. Uh, I, all these like, 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 all of a sudden shit changes. These cars though, really inefficient. You have all these people coming down from San Francisco. <laughs> I know. That's, that's a different story. Why not try the train? That's a different story. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we should be but, but I'm just saying, like, 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 yeah, new things happen, and and uh, I I just find it like also fun as a like like a like a uh, as personal development. So I just, oh, I've got a new tool. It's kind of cool. Uh, and, and hey, does it, does it actually make my life easier? If it doesn't, I'll forget it. Don't use it. But if it does, I think it's cool. <coughs> anyway, let me not that long. <laughs> anyway, so if you can help, uh, if you can help whatever way with that, you can use it as a trial run. Uh, that would be good. And we can document it, and if people were to move down that road anyway, then we can just 
faith, rest in you. Is that reasonable? Yep. All right. Hey, right on time. We have about five seconds. So thanks, everyone, for attending. Uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks, Ali. Thanks, Sharma.